Alright, welcome back to Turd Towns, the channel that shines a light on some of the lesser known places in the UK. For good, but usually for bad reasons. And unusually for us, it's been mostly a positive month lately, so it's time to get back to what we're known for, visiting depressing Turd Towns. This week we continued our northern exploration as we visited the five worst places in Northumberland. Why is it five? A few reasons. Northumberland is one of the nicest counties and we didn't want to include places just for the sake of it. Also, the weather turned so filming became difficult. And finally, my feet split open and I could hardly walk. I was hobbling around on my dead feet. So do me a favour and like, comment, share, subscribe to help my feet come back to life. Yeah, we actually visit all the places we talk about in a day, so filming is kind of a one-shot deal. I'm not saying these places are the worst in England, I'm just saying they are the worst in the county of Northumberland. That's the concept here. Anyway, Northumberland is in the northeast of England and it's the most northern county before you reach Scotland. It is the least densely populated county in England as well at around 63 people per square kilometre. The county as a whole is closely associated with nearby Newcastle. It's a weird county too because there's a lot of poverty concentrated in the south of the county. But the rest of it is pretty wealthy. At least I won't have far to travel for once. And on the subject of poverty in the northeast, honestly, at least on the surface of it, the northwest looked to be struggling more than the northeast. But let's get into it the five biggest tur towns in Northumberland. Number five Newbiggin by the Sea. Newbiggin is a small town with a population of 5,953 located by the sea, of course. I didn't completely hate Newbiggin, it was just a bit of a strange place, and I can imagine this being a desperate kind of place in the winter. It felt like a place which was trying to be touristy, but I cannot imagine wanting to actually visit here. It seems that some people did used to visit here though as there were holiday parks. Sounds like they're all up for sale now though. It turns out that New Biggin is not just a touristy place, oh, it's also a former mining town. Here we go again. So I guess New Biggin is multi-talented. Much of the town has a derelict, rundown look to it. It's much like many of the other seaside towns you're used to seeing on this channel, but I doubt this one was ever that good. The main road through the town is literally a dead end. Very appropriate for a place like this. It barely even feels like a town. It's nothing but a co-op, some smashed up pubs and second hand furniture shops. Okay, I'm forgetting the beach, which does look pretty nice. Shame that the temperatures rarely reach above 15 degrees here. I suppose it's alright for walking the dog. In 2007, 10 million pounds were spent importing sand to this beach from Skegness. They also added this weird sculpture called The Couple, and they did this more than once for some reason. There was nothing set up to explain all this craziness. What was the relevance of this couple, or why they look like they've just had an argument? This is apparently a pretty big deal locally, and people flock from miles around to see these sculptures. If you want to live in the town with the world famous statues of a couple standing still doing nothing but looking miserable, it's very cheap, an average of only 117,000. And just like the couple, if you choose to live here you can expect many arguments for your significant other. Unfortunately, New Biggin is the third most deprived town in Northumberland, with 63% of residents deprived in one way. That's actually down from 68% in 2011, so I guess something to celebrate? All in all, it's bleak, it's depressing, but at least it's by the sea. So you can visit here and stare out at the water daydreaming about being literally anywhere else. Number 4. Stakeford. Stakeford is a large village with a population of 8,000 joint on to the other villages of guidepost and sheep washers. Where one begins and the other ends is your guess. It's like a never ending turd. This is the point where both the weather and my feet got so bad that I couldn't continue so I'll have to keep this entry brief. It's a former mining area, because of course it is. The Choppington mine was nearby. At this point it would be a compelling video to find a nice former mining area. The whole place is essentially just one giant ball of mould. It's nothing but social housing centre around a battered old pub. It was extremely intimidating here as locals wrapped in hoodies with face coverings glared at me suspiciously. Maybe they were wondering why I was walking so strangely. House prices here are a little high at 151000 I'd probably give that a miss because I can't think of anything positive to say about this congealed combination of turds. Number 3. Camis Camis is the reason I'm going to invest in a GoPro from now on. But first, it's a former town, yep, yeah, but now it's just a village, with a population of 
I don't really know. You know you're in trouble when there's no reliable data for how many poor souls call this home. Call it a thousand. What an interesting place. Lots of history here. But first, a man was very upset when I filmed his little mine shaft. I'm giving you the tame version of events here, but we had a pretty lengthy argument over legalities. No, I'm not one of these order to channels and I really don't go looking for trouble. The guy took a hilarious photo of me. Hopefully that surfaces soon. I think he thought I was after a scrap metal, but this did push me to finally invest in a GoPro as this was getting out of hand. This man came across as being the mayor and he was very proud of Camus and knew all the history. So he's probably not going to enjoy this video. So what's the deal here? This was once a major centre of industry, hence why it used to be a town. In the Victorian times, there was almost 4,000 people calling Camus home. It was said that the biggest coal mine in the north of England was based here. It was so busy there were four railway tracks going through the town, industry everywhere. It would not have been hard finding a job here back in the day, and I bet you can all guess what happened next. The big pit closed in the late 60s, but not only did it take away the jobs, for some reason it took away most of the houses. Around 350 of the homes were owned by the mining company and they got flattened when the mine closed. Empty, overgrown roads are everywhere now where terraces once stood. There's really only one road left in the village now, and that's pretty much all you get. There's nothing here, except the scars left by the huge former industry buildings. The empty railway line takes up lots of space and often causes the only road in the village to be closed because they do occasionally run freight trains down here. It all adds to the gloomy atmosphere. The fourth largest building in the whole of England was supposed to be set up here to make batteries, but the company went bust and that's all just sitting rotting away whilst they make a decision. I'm not sure if there's anything left that works in Camus, everything is just stuck in the past. There's also horses just stood around waiting to be ridden. Yep, this is one depressed horse. I asked him why the long face, and he said, because he lives in Camus. Very depressing and eerie, but the beach is stunning, so maybe go there and then leave. Number 2, Blythe. Blythe is the largest town in Northumberland with a population of 39,732. I recently visited Barrow in Furness in Cumbria, and it was almost like Blythe was the exact same place. Blythe is a port town, and because of that there's lots of ugly industry buildings existing around here. Well, industry buildings and terrace houses. Yep, it's pretty depressing here. In fact, two parts of Blythe are amongst the three most deprived parts of Northumberland. This is someone that's really struggling when they talk about the poverty of the northeast. But surprisingly, things are improving. You can tell that wind energy is a growing part of the economy here. There's also going to be a new railway station opening up soon. In fact, I can't believe there wasn't one already. How could a place this size make it to 2023 without a station? Must have been one of the largest places without a station in England. Pathetic. I can see why they always said they were forgotten about in the northeast. Blythe isn't far from Newcastle, it's about a 30 minute journey, and with the new line, that's going to improve, so good transport connections here. Anyway, let's try and keep the positive vibes going. Blythe surprisingly doesn't have the worst crime in the county, and whilst 124 in a thousand isn't a great crime rate, it used to be far worse five years ago, so that's something else to be celebrating. It's also set to get a brand new cinema here. I don't know what all these people are complaining about, Blythe is getting treated better than a lot of places I've been to. House prices here seem to be on the rise. I think 147,000 on average is a bit much for somewhere like this. You would expect to be paying a little bit less for a place like this. Perhaps people can see that this place is making an effort to improve itself. The town centre is pretty bad, but apparently it used to be much worse. Not sure how. This footage is shot around 9am in the week, and I can't tell if any of the businesses on this street remain, or if they're all just having a lion. Most of the centre is set around this market area, and there's also this little shopping area which arrived in Blythe about two decades late. It was only built in the mid-2000s, but they've actually just had to sell it to the council because only about 8 out of 25 of the shops are occupied. It's going to be closed down for good in 2024. As we continue to see our town centre's main use change forever, the council will be turning this one into an education centre for clean energy. Based on comments from the residents on their local news website, they don't want an education centre, and that's the nicest way I can possibly put it. But you don't always get what you want. But at this point, I did, as I was able to get in my car and leave and never come back. It was bad, but maybe not as bad as I expected. And number one, Ashington. Coming in at number one is the former mining town of Ashington with a population of 28,278. 
I'd never even heard of Ashington before my visit, and there was a good reason for that too. This place hasn't been relevant for at least 60 years. For a place the size of Ashington, you might expect to have actually heard of it. There's nothing here and it hasn't changed since the Victorian times. In fact, it's got worse since the Victorian times. The mining in the town all ceased in the 80s and just like Blythe, Ashington hasn't had a railway station for 60 years. Yet again, another huge place of our station. It has now been addressed because also like Blythe, they're getting one. But you can definitely see how the people in the northeast used to say they were being left behind. Blythe Main Street is constructed from red brick buildings and it's not a bad area, it just doesn't feel like you're anywhere of any importance. Don't you just hate it when you see once grand buildings like this one reduced to nothing? What did this used to be? What a shambles. Walking around here was weird. Nobody seemed to have a job to go to and people were just hanging out. And it's one of those places where there must have been something in the water. Ashington is the only other place to make the top three most deprived in Northumberland. And also like Blythe, the government have decided to do something about that. They are going to solve the poverty here by building a cinema for £30 million. I'm not entirely sure how that's going to help them. The fact that the government still thinks cinemas are incredibly relevant to the North East proves two things. One, they have no imagination. And two, the internet has not yet reached Ashington. Cinemas down my way keep closing down. Is it really levelling up the North East by building cinemas? Let me know in the comments if you still think cinemas are relevant and if you still use them. Anyway, Ashington does not take the top spot on this list due to the fact that the majority of people from England could not point it out on a map, nor the fact that they're all looking forward to watching Charlie Chaplin at their new cinema in five years' time. No, no, it takes the top spot due to its crime data, which is the worst in Northumberland. At least houses are cheap, though, at an average of 142,000. I feel like I'm being overly negative about poor Ashington, so for once, we'll end on some praise. I've been to worse former mining towns. So that's that. Not too bad overall. A few turds stick into the bowl, but a pretty nice county overall. Do you agree with our choices? Make sure to let us know in the comments where we should visit next. And don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe to help Turd Towns thrive.